Right, we've got a Yamaha XJ600. And what I'm going to be doing on this now is checking the valve clearances. And what I've got to do to do that is to remove the tank, remove the air box that's underneath the tank. By the looks of it, I'll probably have to remove the carbs to gain access to the rocker cover so we can loosen all those bolts off and then withdraw the rocker cover out and then we'll uh, we'll check the clearances on them I've noticed over the last couple of weeks it taps quite a bit on startup now I know it's quite a common thing on these but I'm going to check the clearances anyway it's always worth checking and we'll start by removing the tank in a minute right so we've got the seat off put the tank off next thing to come off is the airbox you undo here with these uh, these four jubilees. Take off the breather hose there, and there's another one under there. Might be on the other side, I think. Actually, no. There's one here, and there's one on the other side as well. And then the next job is to take off the fuel supply and drain the carbs. You got uh, the drains here for the bulbs. Drain them off. Be careful; you can take them off without draining them, but uh, it does make a bit of a mess. Right, let's get on with it. Take that off, so we can gain access then to the rock cover. Right, cabs are off. Still pretty nice and clean there. And that's what you're left with. I was going to take the carbs off anyway to give them a check and over. And uh, we'll block down holes up in a minute. That's the intake. So we'll block them up to stop anything falling off down there. We'll move all this out of the way. And uh, we'll get to all them. Get the rock cover off. And then we'll check the clearances. Right, so I've plugged up all the intake. Stop anything falling down in there. Rock cover's removed. It's a bit of a pain when you've got the oil cooler in the way. I did unbolt it from under the bottom here. On both sides, lifted it up and folded slightly. That gave me just about enough clearance to get the rock cover out. Right, just before you go to check the clearances, you need to put it to top dead centre by taking this cover off on the side. And you have top dead centre mark there. So you put it to top dead centre on the compression stroke on cylinder one with the plugs removed. And you make sure the cam lobes are facing away from each other, as it says in the Haynes manual. And then when you're ready, you check the clearances between the valve shim and the cam lobe. Now what I always do is to dip a bit of oil on the end of the feeler, so you've got a bit on there and test it. Now I happen to know this is 10 already so should be a little bit of resistance there not too much not too little so it should be just right as you can see there and that one happens to be I don't know if you can see it there with the glare It's upside down. So look either way. Right. That one's a 0 0.10 mil millimeter. So that one's a little bit under spec. So we'll change that one out. Right. If like me you haven't got the tool to get this shim out, usually you've got a, like a C-shaped tool that sits on the camshaft and can lever it, the uh, the bucket, the valve shim bucket down. Fortunately I don't have that tool and I believe here in the UK it's about £25 to buy it. So this is another way you can do it. We twist that one around using the appropriate socket and you bring that cam lobe round 
So the valve bucket is fully compressed. I think that's about right there. Now what you do with the spark plug removed on cylinder one, the valve is open. So the next thing you need is a cable tie, just like this. And what you do is you bend the tip over on the edge. Some people won't agree with this, but it does the job and uh, it's always worked for me. And what you do, if you get it just right, it might take a few t turns to get this one done, but if you feed it in cylinder one towards the direction of the valve, with the valve open, that should take up a little bit of the space between the valve and the head and the seat. Then, when you bring this back, go slow with it. I can get you a decent view of it there. You'll see that the bucket remains down, giving you a good bit of clearance there. Now, with that. Uh, bit of clearance that you've got there you should be able to pop that shim out of there now if you bring that little notch that's in the bucket around towards you you'll see that you can just see the bottom of the shim now there may be oil underneath there there may be all sorts of, of vacuum and it's been there for a long time so it's it's not going to be easy to get it out straight away what you need is your magnet tip tool a very thin screwdriver and what I do is you can it's, it, it can be tricky as you can see there lift it out gently then get your magnet tool which can also be a bit tricky and there you go it's out Now you should see the number of the shim, you probably won't be able to see this one, because it's quite faint, the last put, there we go, you can just see it there, look, 275, whoever had the shim in there last put it in, upside, put it in the wrong way around and had the uh, number facing upwards, but it gets worn away, which is difficult then to tell what it is, that's why the shims are always facing down, so you don't get any wear on, all, over the numbers. Right, so if we've got all our numbers now written down, I'll understand this, you probably won't. Um, right, I've got them all written down. All of the inlets need changing, and one of the exhaust on cylinder 4 need changing. So that's 0 0.10, so that's 10, well, 0 0.10. So if we look at the diagram on here, chart, it says that any tolerances between 0 0.06 and 0 .0, 0 0.10, which is what ours is, with an installed shim of 275, so we go across on that one. The 275 shim is installed, which means we need a 270. So for that cylinder, or for that valve, we'll order the 270 shim. Now after you've popped the shim back in, and you've still got the cable tie installed, just grab your, your ratchet, back on there, and Wind it back down, so you depress the bucket, and grab the cable tie. When it's fully compressed, give it a pull, there we go, back out, job done. <laughs>